Yeah. So today our program is uh, Rocky Brown. He is the uh, scoutmaster for Troop 2 213, um, our sponsored troop. Um, he uh, will be retiring soon. So today will probably be his last update as scoutmaster. Um, but if you can please give a warm welcome to Rocky Brown. All right, thank you everyone. And I just wanna give a shout out to Chuck as well. He's been the charter rep and he's been very faithful and, and helpful when, when needed when we meet together. So thank you, Chuck. Um, so I'm gonna bring up a PowerPoint if that's okay. Can everybody hear me okay? Chimed in on the, the brag, but I, I wasn't, didn't know if I was able to do that, but um, Forest Grove Rotary has been the charter for the Troop 213 for over 75 years. And uh, I know the troop has been a troop for close to 80. I have the record somewhere and it's in all my paperwork and I'll share that with the next Scoutmaster, I promise. And so last year, summer camps because of COVID were, were canceled and um, which is very unfortunate. That was a council decision. And we, our troop as a whole was planning to go to Emerald Bay down in California. And they waited till just a month before and said, yeah, that's canceled as well. And they refunded our money a little bit later for that. But we did have a group of um, five scouts and three adults that, um, went to Northern Tier, which is up in Michigan border, Canada border. It's a high adventure camp and, and that was success. That was something the troop got to do, even though it was only a few scouts and then they reported back. Let me see. And so they had, I had one of the uh, youth write this up to describe describe their event. Can I remove, um, let me see if I can move that. Yeah, move it over. There we go. Now I can see my screen. Um, and so, the, yeah, they were up at the, the boundary waters of Minnesota, not Michigan, excuse me. I'd never been there, so it's, I have to go by what they told me. And they canoed for 12 days, which would just be amazing, um, totaling 150 miles. And of course, the longest trip of the summer, both in distance and time for compared to other groups that went there. So they actually set the record that summer. Um, and they spotted bull moose and other wildlife and they just had an awesome time. Um, they had to carry canoes across stretches of swamp and they sang songs around the campfire, cracked jokes, swam on legs. I mean, that's what scouting is about. And the whole trip was an exercise in teamwork, especially for one of the scouts who's doing fine now, but he injured his knee and he had it wrapped up. And of course they were at the back of the lakes, which was way, I, I, they kind of describe it as far enough back, they couldn't, they couldn't bring him right in for emergencies so he had to endure the trip as well with the others and so they had to reallocate the gear in the packs to accommodate his injury on the, the portages so if you ask any of them if you ever get a chance they would say that they gladly brave the mud mosquitoes and injuries for another chance to canoe in the wilderness and they they said it was an adventure of a lifetime and i'm sure it was i've been to jamboree with scouts and those high adventure camps are amazing. And so um, that, and this, this summer, just to touch on that, we're scheduling, right now we have eight scouts signed up to go to Camp Merriweather. And um, there's nine scouts for a high adventure where they're gonna go biking up in Canada and for a trip there. And I don't have the details for that, but that's coming soon. And so what I, what I wanted to touch base on is our Eagle Scouts. So despite COVID, we had Eagle Scouts, our youth, they got their Eagle Scout and completed their projects last year. And um, 
they, they some play sometimes in some instances they had to be a little more creative you know as, as far as keeping the group small and um being able to accomplish the tasks at hand and these are the eagle scouts that um that went through in 2020s when they did their projects and a lot of it spilled into 21 because of the timing of that Eagle border review. And that's why I put 2021 on there. But Kyle Hoekstra was in February, Austin Walker in May, Kristen, Christopher Dernberger and Josiah in September, Ethan Jones right about that same time and Hannah Powell just finished up her Eagle border review, but her project was last year. And so with that, I wanted to show off some pictures. So this is Ethan Jones Eagle Project. You might recognize one of your, your members right here, even though he's masked up with a hat and a mask. <laughs> and so this, it started out um, as a, a overgrown with weeds and undergrowth and all that. And so they had to clean all this up to get to this here with raised garden beds. And um, it, it was a success. Somebody actually milled the wood for this project and we put it together, placed them out there, placed the, the soils in there. So great project. And that was uh, over at Joseph Gale Schools where that was located. Hannah Powell, um, she came in just before she turned 18, she joined the troop. And so she got a two year extension. And um, I, don't, I don't have her scoutmaster here, so I'm speaking on behalf at, as a whole. The girls have actually joined the troop together because there's only two or three of them at a time. So they join us. But Hannah Powell, Powell's project was at the Gales Creek Cemetery. And they'd asked to set up these pads and place benches on them around because there's a great view if you ever go up there to Gales Creek Cemetery. You know, some people like to visit the cemetery, but you, you, they had these great benches that she built, and um, she divided groups up into smaller groups to uh, kind of dig a, pa a pad area out, pour the concrete, and a and seeing that middle area where they have it all set up to pour the concrete and then let it dry and then she came back later probably seven days later and placed these benches on them so it was a great project hannah is the first youth well now she's 20 she just turned 20 but she got she she hit the ground running she turned 18 she had two years to get her eagle and she did it with um a month to spare so it's just amazing so it's possible for a scout to get their eagle within two years and i've seen i've seen very few even get to that point but she she has shown to the others that it's possible and um i believe she is the first female in the council and this side of the rocky mountains to get her eagle but i have to back that up somebody told me that but I'll, I can find out more later to share that through uh, um, Chuck, through Chuck Richard. Let's see if that pops up. There it is. And there's Kyle Hoekstra's. His was on the ship. This is before the lockdown last Feb February. And, um, and so they have this ship that they're in constant um, rejuvenation or whatever. These ships are what they used to transport I think 200 military on these, and they were able to get up on the beach, open up the bottom, and they'd unload there. And they have all these little areas that they'd stuff, I don't know, 50 men in a spot that looks like it's only large enough for 20. And they'd have to ride in those, cook in those and everything in those little spots. But um, Kyle's project was, uh, uh, building shelves and repainting, doing some repairs. Uh, there were some ropes that were, were tied, retied and stuff like that. It's a great project. And so I didn't have, there were a couple others. I didn't have Christopher Durenberger's. His was 
building um, these shelters that go over trash receptacles down Main Street. And he actually did the design in 3D and was able to show the committee that he was the benefactor. I was amazed by his, his tech, what he was able to put together to show them. And, and because of COVID and where they were meeting, he could only have uh, a couple of families assist him with the, with the scouts, uh, probably about three scouts. They could help them actually do his project, but I didn't get any pictures from him. And then, of course, my son, who I'm very proud of, got his eagle as well. And so I wanted to show a video because I had tons of pictures and it's hard for me to choose. I am. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Edited me out. I missed you when I was bow hunting, Derek. I like the video because it kind of captures the essence of every Eagle project. For one, the, the scout whose project it is, they're there just managing. They're not doing any of the labor. They've done all the work before to get it coordinated for this project, get the people there, get the food there, 
um, any expenses that are that need to be incurred, they raise the money. My son had had plenty that he'd raised for that, and there were costs for running things back and forth. But all all the Eagles have the same type of scenario, and um, it, it to be to make Eagle is a really high honor, and and to have those that made Eagle, I'm very proud of them. They did really well. And so with that, um, just to let you know, Bill Drew is our committee chair. I have, there's not I, but the troop has five assistant scoutmasters. I always call them my assistant scoutmasters because they assist me where in areas that, uh, with different strengths or maybe cover for me on camp outs and outings and work, working on advancements as well. And, um, and then, of course, we have the committee that helps with those boards of review because the scoutmaster and assistants aren't allowed to be a part of those board of review. So I need, need the help of those other parents. And um, just like the end, um, I've been scoutmaster since uh, 2015. And um, it, it's, been a, it's been a lot of fun, great ride. But my wife is telling me it's time to step down and let somebody step back up. And um, I have I have a younger dad, uh, well, a young son, that's interested in looking, getting the training. He's not there yet, but he is going to get the training. But in the meantime, I'm looking for an interim scoutmaster, and I'm coming to the Rotary. I know there's some um, individuals in your group that have experience in that, and I'm coming to make that ask of the Rotary. So thank you for letting me prepare. This was great. Are there any questions? Hey, Rocky, it's Julia Kohler. Um, what's the criteria for the Eagle Project? So the Eagle Project has to be something that benefits the community. So it's hard if it's an individual's house or, you know, our scoutmaster or leader's house or anything like that. It, um, so like they can do work at a school or cemetery or, you know, any public type place that benefits or even um, I, I saw one where an HOA needed the frontage, the street frontage rebuilt and redone for the entrance into the HOA or something like that. So that, that could be done. Um, things that can are, you know, like I've had people ask and they come in and restore the stream bank along my property I said, no, they can't do that. Or taking down trees, it, there's certain um, uh, safety things that uh, National has in place, what scouts can do and what they can't do as far as machinery and um, heights, you know, they can't climb up above a six, a five foot ladder. There, there's different rules. And the funding that's involved is usually coming from the scout to ben the, the benefactor will sometimes up front a lot of things but like in my son's case he brought he bought the wood for that deck he paid for all we had to haul the debris off there were three big loads that we hauled off to i think it's a1 is the name of it they're not cheap anymore like they used to used to be by the way <laughs> and we we bought the pizza and the coffee and all that and it, my son had 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 the money sitting in the scout funds to be able to cover all that. And they the scout can ask for donations. And there are people in the community that have helped uh, some of the scouts um, be able to raise some money. I know, you know, I've seen like the Elks and some other places throw in five hundred dollars here here and there to help with those projects that benefit benefit the com uh, community. Rocky, just to follow up on that, maybe explain exactly what uh, the EO candidate has to do uh, in terms of coordinating the project and the uh, service hours that he needs to get from individuals. 
Okay, yes. So um, once the scout reaches life rank, and so, you know, they start out scout, second class, first class, uh, star scout, and then life scout. That now they can start looking to put together, uh, look for places to do an eagle project. And th there's forms they have set up. So you write down what you're looking at after you find, you found somebody that needs a project done. They describe what it is, kind of what is going to be entailed as far as time, cost, maybe the number of people. Um, you know, are there any vehicles, you know, you know, everything's involved like a project manager would do for a project. And then they submit it to the Eagle board. They review it and say, yeah, that looks good. You've met all the safety things. You're, fo you're following the criteria for raising funds to be able to fund that or it's coming out of your account or whatever. So they approve that. And then they complete the project you know, after they, like my son sent emails out, he had 30 people there, which is, I, I thought was great for people to, to show up and help him like that. And then he has to manage the groups. Um, he meets, meets with me or his mentor. They set the parameters, make sure they're in groups of five or less or six or less. They're wearing masks if they're within six feet of each other. Um, we'll have the food here, or where are you going to have the food? They're actually guiding the scout. But anyway, once he has that, then after the project's done, he uh, describes what was all entailed, how much it costs, shows some photos of the project, and then um, he turns that in with his Eagle paperwork to, to get all that approved and for his Eagle board review. It's okay. lucky we're going to miss you at the Concord and, and yeah. take the and all these other events that the scouts help us with it every, every year. And we we missed it last year. Yeah, well, so did we. <laughs> well, we can always sign them up as a volunteer. That's an idea, yeah. Do we have so, any other questions for Rocky? Paul, you're on mute. Thank you, Julia. Rocky, how has COVID affected the way you've done? And have you seen an increase of uh, female participation? A substantial amount? So um, the, w the way the troop is set up, there's actually two troops. There's a boys troop and a girls troop. But the girls join us in most of our um, at weekly meetings. And so we've been meeting by Zoom. We have somebody that has an account set up so we can do that. We've been trying to have at least one outing each month so that they can get out and do something following COVID rules, of course, of I think it was eight, eight or less. So like they had a bike ride they went on and while they were biking, I said, you don't have to wear your mask while you're biking on the banks for knowing your trail. But when you're you're stopped and you're close, make sure your masks are on. You know, of course, water bottles and all that. And um, we've gotten together for a neighborhood cleanup around Swallowtails, where we meet. And they we had small groups go out and and canvas the area for for garbage and that. Um, they, they last week they just did a hike. They're building up. For, because they're planning to go to Philmont in 2022, next year, yes, yeah, next year. Yeah, they got all that set up. And um, and so they're starting to do hikes, which the whole troop can take part in that. And this, this last Saturday, they kicked it off, met at Swallowtail and hiked, hiked around uh, Cornelius. And it was about two hours, but they covered the, the mileage that they wanted to for that. and. What, what the um, high adventure leader is trying to do is build up their legs and um, ability to do longer hikes. And they're going to start hiking on trails and 
hills and all that to get them prepared for that that Philmont <laughs> trek, which is a backpacking trip of I think it's 50, 80, and 115 miles or whatever. Another group that went in 2017 signed up for the 80 and wish they'd signed up for the longer because as you hike each day, you find that it gets easier and easier doing distance. And so they're building up for it. But COVID, I noticed to answer your other question, some of our numbers are down a little bit. We're probably at about 15 scouts right now where we were close to 30. And part of that is some of them just can't access Zoom. And I still send out the troop emails because I know they get those from when we do outings, but they've fallen off the page and I try and stay in contact. The scoutmaster for the girls troop, they're down to two girls. They had more, but um, I know I thought we were going to be at three or four. And right now, there's only one that comes regularly to the meetings. And so the girls troop is kind of floundering. Not that they're not looking and waiting, but even when you look at the packs that are the feeders to the troop, they have one, maybe two girls in the pack. And it's just, it, I don't know if they need to do a better job. And during COVID, it's kind of hard of recruiting, getting, getting the girls interested in signing up to be a part of that. Well, thank you, Rocky. Thank you so much for being here and giving us the updates. Um, you know, Troop 213 has been a partner with our club for many years and you know definitely is important to our, our concord to our stake feed i mean it's just a great group of young people and their leaders their role models people like you so thank you